Well, hello, and welcome back to the Master Books Podcast. Today, I have author Kate Hannon. She has written many math curriculum for Master Books, including Principles of Math, which we'll talk about today. Principles of Math is designed for your 7th and 8th grade students. She's also going to be talking about Revealing Arithmetic, which she wrote for you, the mom or the parent teacher. So I'm looking forward to you learning from her about the biblical worldview of mathematics, as well as her own experience writing and how these books will help you and your students achieve your goals. So let's get started. Welcome to the Master Books Podcast, where we bring you conversations that will strengthen your biblical worldview and the faith of your family. I'm Jennifer White, publicist at Master Books, a division of New Leaf Publishing Group. As host of this show, I'll be opening the doors to the Master Books family library of books, authors, and curriculum. For over 45 years, our company has been about one thing, ink on paper to touch eternity. In a world increasingly at war with God, we are publishing to partner with you to disciple your family, the church, and the nations. So Kate, welcome to the show. So glad to have you on the Master Books podcast today. Thank you. It's a joy to be here. Yeah, thanks. So today I want to start by talking about revealing arithmetic. You actually wrote this resource, not for the student as a curriculum, but as a resource for the parent who is teaching math. So I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about the book. I have been pouring over it this morning. This let me see if I can get it in the screen. For those of you who are watching by video, I'm showing the book Revealing Arithmetic, Math Concepts from a Biblical Worldview. So tell us a little bit about why you wrote this and how it's going to help the teacher. So it's written to help the teacher as they're teaching elementary concepts. Um, and it's arranged by concept because students learn it at different paces. And I wanted them to be able to find quickly whatever it was they're teaching. So if you're teaching addition, there's an addition chapter. There's actually two, one for the concept and one for multi-digit addition. And so you can open it up, quickly get a biblical worldview of, okay, how do we look at addition from a biblical worldview? And then bullet it out ideas ready to go that you can use with your child. Um, and they're for different ages. So some of them are marked for higher students so that if you have an older student, you would look for those ideas. If you're just teaching the concept for the first time, you would pick one of the simpler ones, but you've got all of that right there arranged by concept um, for you as you go through and teach mm -hmm. elementary. And so I wrote it because I wanted parents to have the tools they needed as they were teaching those lower level concepts to really be putting their students' eyes back to the Lord. Because a lot of times at the at the lower levels, a lot of the teaching is done verbally because the child can't read yet. And right. Um, so a lot of it is just going to be the parent imparting that as they're going through their curriculum. And so this will help parents understand what to be imparting as they're going along there and how really throughout life they can be bringing that biblical worldview of math into their mm -hmm. child as they point out, hey, you know, we just used fractions as we were cooking today and we can do mm -hmm. that because God made us in his image and, you know, math's a useful tool. And there's little comments that can be made all throughout life to make math really an exploration journey for the mm -hmm. child and the parent that also continually points their back to the Lord. Right. Well, I love that you're using math to point families to the Lord. And we at Master Books try to bring in the God who created each subject matter into every curriculum. And you've done a beautiful job of that in all of the ones that you've written. I loved what you said in um, Revealing Arithmetic. There's a chapter about math from a biblical worldview, and you shine the light on the false reasoning that math can be a neutral subject. In other words, a godless subject. And you wrote this quote, and I loved it. I wanted to share it with everybody. It says, far from being independent from God, math is entirely dependent on God. So would you share a little bit about the biblical worldview of math that you teach within this book? Sure. So if you picture a tree, because we can kind of see it easier in science, I think, but it's really the same thing in math. When you, when you think about a tree, a Muslim, Christian, atheist, they can all agree on certain aspects of that tree, like how photosynthesis works and how tall the tree is and what color the tree is, right? But that tree is not neutral. Your worldview determines 
where you believe it came from, who is holding it together, who gets the glory for it, Mm -hmm. who are we accountable to for how we use creation. That all comes from your worldview, right? Right. And it's that same way in math. So one plus one equals two, whether you're a Muslim, Christian, or an atheist. Mm -hmm. But your worldview determines what is math really and who gets the glory for it. And so when you think about it, like why does one plus one equal two? It's a question I asked as a kid. I would ask my mom, like, why? And she's like, it just does. Learn it. Come on. (laughs) But it's actually a question that has puzzled mathematicians and scientists throughout history, because apart from a biblical God, it doesn't make sense why one plus one equals two, because we're able to develop math on paper and then it coincides with creation and we can use it to build rockets that actually work. Right. And gravity is consistent day after day. Well, gravity, we write that with math. Math is a way of describing God's creation. Mm. One plus one equals two, because day after day, year after year, God is faithfully governing creation in a consistent fashion. And so every time you solve a math problem and you Mm -hmm. see that, hey, addition is still working the same way, it's a reminder that God is still faithful and he is still governing creation consistently. There's a verse I just want to read from Jeremiah, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 33, 25 through 26. It says, thus says the Lord, if I have not established my covenant with day and night and the fixed order of heaven and earth. So that fixed order would include like those consistencies we're labeling with addition and subtraction, multiplication, division. Right. Okay. Then I will reject the offspring of Jacob and David, my servant. So God's saying, look, you can see from creation, from this fixed order that I'm a covenant keeping God and I'm going to be faith- just as faithful. In this case, he's pointing out his covenant to Jacob and David, mm-hmm. but it's reminding us that he is a covenant keeping God. So mass message, it should be shouting out to you and to your children every time you use it, that I better trust God because he's going to do what he says, just mm-hmm. as faithfully governing creation in a consistent way. And that doesn't mean he created the symbols that are on the piece of paper. I just want to clarify that. And that's mm-hmm. something I go over a lot in revealing arithmetic. Those symbols are like a language system that God gave man the ability to develop, to describe those real life consistencies. Mm-hmm. And there are different symbols that men have used. And some of that is explored in revealing arithmetic so that students understand, okay, there's this language side, but what we're really describing are these consistencies that God created and sustained. Isn't that beautiful? I'm, I wish I would have learned that growing up, you know, in the public school mm-hmm. system. Of course I didn't, but you know, I don't know that I would have known that if I hadn't worked for master books and been exposed to your materials. And I'm so excited for all of our friends with the moms of master books, those who are using our materials to be able to know who God is through math and be able their children to going into the next generations and into their into their careers and to have that information to share with other people and to develop things, create things write things, knowing the God who is consistent, consistently in math. And I was looking over your book this morning and found that you've even included a whole chapter. It starts at 167 on math and the gospel. And that is amazing to have a whole chapter. I encourage every one of you to grab this book. It's not expensive at all, but to have math and the gospel in your heart so that you can have that conversation with anybody you come across in your work life, in your home life, all of those things. And that was part of the passion that led me to to write this material is that Mm -hmm. I grew up in a Christian homeschooling family, but didn't see God in math. And it ended up being this hurdle for me in really embracing the gospel because I thought, oh, well, mathematicians are saying God doesn't exist and they're right about one plus one equaling two. So what What's wrong here? So my faith had been subtly put in math and man, Mm -hmm. when really math's whole message and existence is shouting at us that there has to be a biblical God and that we should trust him. But Mm -hmm. when we're not seeing it that way, then we end up subtly just buying into, okay, well, math, everyone can tell math works and it's pretty amazing. But if God's not getting that glory, then it ends up, even if you're not saying it, it ends up going to math and to man and Mm -hmm. suddenly building, oh, I can trust math and I can trust man because you're seeing this incredible thing that does work. Yes. Um, And so, so yeah, but really it is pointing us to the gospel and that there is a God and we can trust him and we better pay attention to it. And so that, Mm -hmm. that's my prayer is that, that students will leave equipped that, wow, they really can 
take God to the bank, so to speak. They can relax. Yes. Said. <laughs> yes. And, and I hope every um, parent listening is encouraged that these courses that you have written and this book that they will read will help you teach your child to glorify God in math, to not usurp the glory mm -hmm. that God deserves for math. I think that's a really big deal. It's a big deal in every subject that you're teaching that God gets the glory. But the way you have helped parents see that and express it, I think is so wise and important. And I'm thrilled that our our tribe, our family in Masterbooks has that information. I was looking at the reviews um, before we got on this call and saw several moms talking about how great the book was for them. And Christy said, this is an excellent resource for any parent teaching math concepts. JW said, this book helps guide you to both understand and teach math concepts from a biblical worldview. It's not just a curriculum. It's not a curriculum but designed to use alongside the math curriculum. So it's not even just to use alongside a math curriculum that you wrote. It's not right. just to pair it with something that you wrote or even that master books wrote. It is something that you can use with any math up to what point, what age? It cover. I mean, it's covering the concepts in pre-K through about grade six, but you, I've seen older students actually read through it to kind of get that biblical worldview on some of the basics. But the idea would be for parents in pre-K through grade six to use it with their children. Okay, pre-K. And it does work. I wrote it knowing it could be in any curriculum out there, mm -hmm. but it's arranged by concepts. So you could easily find whatever you were teaching. And there's also an index to help with that as well. Right. And in the show notes, I will link to a look inside of this particular book so that you can see the table of contents and explore it a little bit. So you'll understand how it's set up, how easy it is for you to find the concepts that you are about to teach so that you can study up as the home educator and be prepared to teach it so that you do help give glory to God and help them learn it. And there's also a course on the Academy that goes with it. It's completely optional, but if parents want like a little bit more hands-on demonstration of actually like, what does it look like teaching this? Mm -hmm. Watch that in the videos as well. That's right. So masterbooksacademy.com, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is our online learning portal. And Catherine Hannon has created lessons, created courses to help you go through her curriculum, including revealing arithmetic. So that is a great way for you to help teach your students the, each math course that she's written, but as well teach yourself before you teach the student if you take the revealing arithmetic. And so I'll link to that as well in the show notes. Thank you for reminding me of that. Sure. So let's also talk about principles of math. That is a course that you wrote um, that we use for seventh and eighth grade, correct? It's hard to pin exact grades at that level because okay. it's whenever students are, are ready to kind of transition over, but it's either grade six and seven or seven and eight, depending on okay. the student. Right. So more skill-based than grade yeah. level based. Yes. So what do you teach in book one and book two? So book one covers arithmetic and introduces a little bit of geometry. So it's firming up what they should have already learned in grades one through six or the, okay. the previous math courses and really making sure that they know it and fill in any gaps. So I wrote it assuming kids were coming from any curriculum and tried to make sure all those gaps would get filled before they went into high school. Because what happens is if you start dealing with letters in algebra mm -hmm. and you didn't really understand the concept with concrete numbers back in arithmetic, mm -hmm. you're lost. And a lot of kids end up just really struggling there. And it's mm -hmm. because they didn't understand fractions earlier or some concept from earlier. So it is reviewing that, but it's reviewing it while including a ton of mass history and science and practicality so that they're getting that biblical worldview and really understanding, okay, this is why we're studying this. And this is mm -hmm. how it's going to God. And they're building their problem solving skills. So it really emphasizes and teaches problem solving skills rather than a ton of problems each day to solve. There'll be fewer, but they're structured so that they mimic more real life situations. So in a real life situation, 
when you're trying to solve a problem, it doesn't come with, you need to use addition, you need to use subtraction. It, it, mm -hmm. And it's not written in a perfect way where you can figure that out by the wording, right? right? You just have this problem to solve. Well, I want students to be able to use math for God's glory in whatever field he calls them. Mm -hmm. So part of that is learning to really break down multi-step problems and real life problems. And so that's mm -hmm. taught and done in the worksheets as well, a lot in book one. And then in the second part, it introduces some geometric concepts just to kind of give them that big picture when they do head off into geometry of like, what am I doing here? Okay. But along the way, they're continuing to review a lot with fractions and with unit conversion, because that's another area where a lot of students will get to upper math or science and not really understand what to do with all these units. And so that's stressed a lot in book one to really both review fractions and prepare them for what's coming next. Great. And then in book two, book two is more of a pre-algebra. So we're introducing, okay, why are we using letters? How is that really mm -hmm. describing real life relationships that God created and sustains and continuing to build on, on where we were in book one, but really moving into that pre-algebra, um, looking at coordinate graphing, what is all that about? Mm -hmm. um, I think it also touches on probability in there. Um, so it's both of them together will mm -hmm. give the student like, fill in all the gaps from where they came from and give them that big picture of where they're going so that they really understand what math's all about and how it proclaims God's glory and are equipped to use it in a practical way. Right. And it sounds like the way you've designed it is we're not just teaching students math so they can pass a test and get a degree, get their high school graduation degree, and then move mm -hmm. on to college or on to work. We're, you are teaching them how to think and apply math to whatever situation they're in, wherever they're working, so that all of this was not for naught, <laughs> you know, that all of it was for a good purpose. And I know that when I've been working with children who are working, you know, studying for a test, and they're like, well, I just need to be able to fill in the blanks, you know, or matching. And I'm like, no, you need to know the concept. You need to understand why this is the answer. And a lot of times I think in public school, that's not necessarily the case of what's happening, but I love that you have created these courses so that there is that critical thinking that's happening, life application that's happening while it's biblical and teaching them about our creator. So thank you for bringing all that together. It's been a joy. It's been a stretching um, joy, but a joy. I bet. I bet. <laughs> So um, one question I feel like people would ask if they were sitting here with us at a table drinking coffee, which I'm enjoying very much right now, but I feel like they would want to know like, okay, let's say my student is not excellent at math. This is not their strongest subject and they've finished math lessons for a living education or they finished another um, course out there and then they're going to step into principles of math. Is there a, what if they have a learning challenge? What if this isn't their best subject? How will this course help them through and on to high school? And I, I really appreciate that question because my prayer with this course is that it will really help those students understand math because a lot of students think they hate math because they never really understood why they had to learn it. And if you were taught, taught how to cook mm -hmm. from a textbook for eight years without ever being put in the kitchen and actually getting to cook, All right. you would think you hated cooking, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is that way in math. There's a lot of kids that have learned and, and you study and you have no idea why you're really having to learn all this except for mm -hmm. the test, like you're saying. But once you see, oh, this describes music. This helps me with this. This is a, it, then it comes alive and it makes so much more sense. So I've seen students go from hating math to actually getting math as they, mm. as they go through it. So I would encourage you, but there may be a little bit as you're adjusting from fill in the blank mentality to actually thinking through that may be a little bit of an adjustment, but hopefully there's so much interesting things that the student didn't realize before. Mm -hmm. that it can help with that motivation to continue. And there's also the academy courses. So if you have a student that is struggling, 
sign up for the Academy course. You have access to email me if you have questions as you're going, but the videos will really break it down to, to help them make sure that they're getting it. But I designed it to, to fill in gaps. Sometimes students struggle too because they have a gap somewhere and they didn't mm -hmm. understand something. And this is going through it all in order um, so that they're getting those gaps filled in mm -hmm. along the way. And in fact, it can even be used by high school students who got to algebra and are struggling. They need to go back and do a review course. There's a schedule in there to do both books in one year to add okay. an accelerated pace for older students who need that review. Plus, um, Math Lessons for Living Education Level 6 was written specifically to try to transition over into it. So I know that the author there had tried to think through what the students mm -hmm. would need okay. to make that transition as, as smooth as possible. So um, I would just say, don't, don't, don't worry. Don't stress. Sign up for the Academy course mm -hmm. and know that this is designed to try to help those students really understand that math before they end up um, at the high school level. Right. So not only do we have the help in your book revealing arithmetic for the mom or the parent who is teaching math, who may feel uncomfortable teaching math, maybe math wasn't their best subject either, but you've got um, the curriculum as well as your video teaching to help them teach well and to make the class more independent for students who maybe they do excel in math and you don't and they're ahead of you already. So they have you as an instructor with the Master Books Academy course so the parent can move on to teach something else with another student or just have time to do life while they're doing um, their principles of math workbook. So thank you again for creating those and the course, the uh, video courses to help the parents. We are thrilled to offer your curriculum at Master Books. Oh, thank you. So one last quick question before we um, sign off. I wanted to see if you have a special book or resource at Master Books that you didn't write that you highly recommend to people that you love or friends or anywhere that you would like to recommend to the moms of master books who are listening. And that question I've been thinking about because there's so many. Okay. <laughs> it's hard, hard to pick one. I mean, I grew up master books. My mom had found when I was like an early teen okay. and she just started bombarding us with, with those resources. And it was mm -hmm. so helpful in just understanding, Oh, wow, I really can trust the Bible. So to try to figure just one, it's like, okay. But mm -hmm. I kind of honed in on The Ultimate Proof by Dr. Jason Lyle. Okay. I, I read it probably pretty quickly after it first came out. And mm -hmm. also some of his, his workshops on that. And he goes through and he shows how really apart from a biblical God, you can't even explain how we can know anything. <laughs> and that's something that kind of leads right into what I've presented in the math and, and kind of got me thinking of that whole, whole reality of, wow, really, God is the one sustaining all of this, mm -hmm. including logic, including math. And so that would be probably the one I would highlight. So the, the other one would be, proof. I can do a second one. The other one would be A is for Adam, because that was just such a cool uh, resource. And I've used it with my son. And it's just, it shares the whole gospel in such a, an easy, you know, letter-based way that is just, but starting in Genesis, so they get yeah. that. I really love that. Wonderful. So A is for Adam and the Ultimate Proof of Creation by Dr. Lyle. Yes. I will put those in the show notes as well. So all of you can explore those at masterbooks.com. Thank you so much. Kate, for being on the show, being our author, just investing in the lives of this generation. We are thrilled to partner with you in that. Well, thank you for all you guys do. We appreciate you. Absolutely. And we want to bless you, the listener and your family with everything you need for life and godliness. We know it is available to you through Jesus Christ, and it is available to you in these curriculums to help you honor the Lord to help you help your students honor the Lord and carry on that in the next generations. We're so thrilled to partner with you for Ink on Paper to touch the eternity of your family, the eternity of those around you. And we just look forward to seeing you back on the podcast next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for joining the Master Books podcast. This was fun and we are really glad you were with us. We invite you to check out masterbooks.com. We have a big library of books that will feed the faith of your family. And hey, 
subscribe to our channel so you won't miss an episode. We'll see you next time.